there is new merch at teespring.com. Get your official merch from the hub in four different designs. There are also different colors and different sizes for all. So uh, yeah, as you heard, that was my niece, guys. The uh, store is up now at Teespring. Go there quickly and maybe, man, maybe if enough of you guys go over, I'll probably give you guys a discount code. I've been thinking about it. Also, memberships are now available on the channel. You probably see the blue join button right next to the subscribe button. It is completely optional for you to do that. There's three different tiers, the team player, team coach, and team manager. I already got two brand new members. I'd love to give a big thank you and shout out to them and Nikki and Die Hard Giants fans. Uh, they're gonna my, be my first two members and I'm definitely gonna give a discount code to them for being the first people to join the channel. That being said, let's actually get into the video now. So, I saw this a couple minutes ago on Twitter, didn't have the time to immediately get to my recording stuff and to get to make a video, but the Giants have now basically reached their new NFL 80 man roster limit. In order to do that, they had to cut a couple of players, wave a couple of guys, and today I think they waved around eight guys including two of my favorite that I was hoping would make the team and one of them I guess you can consider a fan favorite but the Giants obviously they had to cut down um, to get to that 80 man roster and here are the eight guys that they cut down from this is from Giants.com I will link the article in the description below if you want to give it a read yourself this is what it says the Giants waived to eight players to reach the NFL's newly significant roster limit of 80 players Four of the release players have regular season experience. Running back John Hillman, he's somebody I guess I can consider a fan favorite. Everybody was, you know, rooting for John Hillman last year. Linebacker Chris Peace, uh, safety Rashawn, is that Golden or Golden? It looks like Golden. And cornerback Shaquille Taylor. Now Shaquille Taylor, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel some type of way about this release because he was somebody that I legitimately thought would have a chance of making that second outside cornerback spot. I thought he had the physical um, traits to get there in terms of speed and both his physical frame. The dude was nice and tall. He also had a great wingspan. I think it was like 6'2 or 6'3 wingspan. That's gonna help you out a lot being on the outside cornerback role. But he was released and I mean, we just picked him up on Tuesday. They also waived um, four rookie or first year players Case Cookus of Northern Iowa, I think he was the quarterback, one of the undrafted free agents that the Giants signed. Fullback George Ashton of Pittsburgh and linebackers Olawole Batiku Jr. of Illinois and Dana Levine of Temple. My man Olawole Batiku, man. Ah, I feel so bad that he didn't make it. He was somebody I was rooting for. For those of you that don't know, Olawole Batiku was the player that I interviewed on the Young uh, the Young Guns podcast with Kid Blue. He's the Giants linebacker. We got to come on to the podcast and interview. It's still up. It's still a great interview. It's sad he didn't make the team. I would still say you guys go out there and check it out. It was really insightful into his journey all the way from Nigeria to America and, you know, becoming American football player. But unfortunately, he did not make the cut. So two players for sure, or three, to be honest with you, that I'm really surprised were released were uh, John Hillman, Batiku, and mostly Shaquille Taylor, because we literally just signed the guy. But then also, wide receiver Damari Scott, I saw this on Twitter as well, and they put it in this article as well, he will opt out of the 2020 season along with Nate Solder. We all know Nate Solder announced on Wednesday that he won't play, but Damari Scott, a wide receiver that, if I'm completely honest with you guys, somebody, if I'm be honest with you guys, I am completely forgot was on the team in Damari Scott, I mean... In terms of depth, it definitely kind of hurts us. You know, we're now one less wide receiver, but the Giants also picked up, I think it was Tony Brown or Troy Brown, a wide receiver. Let me check real quick what his position was, but I saw this once again on Twitter as well. Been a busy day on Twitter. Let me pull that up real quick. Yeah, that's correct. They signed Brown as an undrafted free agent out of Colorado, and this was... This was literally today. He was with the Browns out straight out of Colorado, and the Giants picked him up off a of waiver. So technically, in terms of depth, we lost somebody in Demary Scott, but it's like he was immediately replaced with Tony Brown. I'm gonna assume that was a you know pretty med meditated move by the Giants. They knew they were gonna use lose Scott, and so they got an easy replacement for him. And in terms of Tony Brown, um, I'm not gonna try and say I know the player or anything like that, but I don't expect him to make too much of an impact. I'm. If he's coming in to replace Demari Scott, then he's going to be a depth receiver. Uh, there's really no telling how much of an impact he could have on the team, but hey man, the Giants could use depth at receiver right now, so I'm not mad about it. I'm glad we got some way to replace that, you know, heavily needed position right now. The article kind of finishes off with talking about, you know, how the NFL is going about the new limits to the roster and whatnot, and talking about training camp, the last, you know, 
really important paragraph of it. It says each team was permitted to begin training camp last week with a traditional 90-man roster, but any team remaining at that number would have to split its squad for all activities, with only half of its players allowed in that team's facility at a time. The Giants have split into three workout groups for weightlifting and conditioning, but most days end with a full squad walkthroughs, which would be prohibited with a 90-man roster. Any team with a larger group of players could not bring them all into its building at one time until August 17th, the first day of full pass practice and when all teams must have no more than 80 players. The Giants roster count is currently at 81, which includes running back Sandro Platzgummer of Austria, who does not count as a roster as an international pathway exemption. Full disclosure here, I have no idea who Sandro Platzgummer of Austria is, if I'm be honest with you. That last name sounds like a weapon of war, so I hope he's a weapon of war for the Giants coming in as a running back through the international pathway exemption, which, full disclosure once again, don't know what that is, so I'll probably look into that. But that, that's a pretty cool guy to have on here. And then, of course, the last thing I want to talk about in today's video is the Giants extending Nick Gates, the offensive tackle. Gates signed a two-year extension with a base salary of $6.285 million that could reach $10.325 million after incentives. And I hear my thoughts on it. Somebody in my Discord actually brought this up to me at first, and he asked my thoughts on it. I was like, oh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good move by the office. You know, Nick Gates is somebody that I think that's going to be a great depth piece and a great swing tackle for the Giants to be used behind the two starters. And potentially this year, he's going to see starting time, depending on what happens with Cam Fleming and Matt Pert. And I've said this in a couple of... Uh, podcast episodes speaking of which tonight on kid blues channel will be a live uh, roundtable podcast with me kid blue the entertainment talking sports and ogr i'm sure this is going to come up but i've said before that nick um that matt pert i almost said nick gates that matt pert should not really start this season he's a complete project player he does not have enough time even if it was a regular off season in my opinion to start day one so the fact being that he has less than a month to prepare for nfl level competition to prepare for an NFL game physically and mentally, him being a project tackle, I think people forget that. He's not gonna do well if he starts, so Nick Gates very well may see the field in a starting role. So in terms of that, it's a great forward-thinking move, you know, both for depth and because he might be, Yeah, and I'm not for this, I personally think Nick Gates should be a role player, but he might be a starter, just given the circumstances of the situation that we're in right now. And so I definitely, I'm for the move, you know, I've seen a lot of people, it's weird, especially like on Giants Twitter and whatnot, there's a lot of people against the move, and then there's a lot of people wholly for the move, and they're defending it with the um, limited sample size that we saw of Nick Gates last year, I think towards the end of the season, and my argument against that is always that it's, it's limited sample size. A lot of things could happen lim in limited sample size that is not necessarily indicative of the player themselves, like look at Chad Wheeler in 2018, I think, when he came in in place of Eric Flowers, uh, we were all happy and we were all glad with Chad Wheeler's performance because he came in place of Eric Flowers. The same thing could be said for Nick Gates. He came in place of Mike Remmers, who was probably the worst right tackle in the league last year. So let's not get too ahead of ourselves. But I kind of like the moves, you know, shoring up the offensive line. You don't want any missing pieces there. So kind of go, going it all over, the Giants finally get their 80-man roster down. They caught a couple players who, to me, were a surprise in Taylor, Hilleman, and uh, Batiku. Um, Nick Gates has signed a contract and also I guess something weird that I don't really have too many thoughts on because the Giants haven't released much information on it is that Leonard Williams has some type of hamstring injury and has been designated with a non-football injury we don't know any details about it whatsoever we don't know if it's a serious one if it's something that's gonna put him out for weeks how he got it there's literally no details about it because the Giants aren't sharing any details about it so I can't give an opinion on it I just hope the dude is healthy by the time the season uh, rolls around. So that's it for now, and I have an outro by my niece. Hey guys, I'm the little niece. Um, subscribe and like my uncle's YouTube channel. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.